Hi, I'm Peter Bassett, Astronomy Roadshow, Mobile Planetarium. Today we're going to talk about the requirements for astronomy with binoculars. Uh, they are slightly different at daylight viewing. First of all, these are 7x50s, uh, and what that means is you've got 7 magnification and 50mm width objective lenses. And uh, the wider these are, the better, could potentially could pick out fainter objects. Okay, anyway, we've got um, exit pupil diameter. Now this is basically the measurement of the beam of lights coming at the back. And uh, quite often they're only two or three millimetres across. Okay for daylight, but at night time your pupils and your eyes widen up to about seven millimetres. Uh, so the closer you can get to an exit pupil diameter, I know it sounds boring, of seven millimetres or better, you're making more efficient use of your dark adaption. Uh, in this case you've got a pair of binoculars and uh, the exit pupil diameter is two and a half millimetres. Uh, so therefore you're not really taking full advantage uh, if you dark adaption at all. Anyway, the closer you can get to 7mm the better, and you can check out these figures before you buy binoculars. You can just ask the, the supplier uh, for that data if you haven't, if it's not providing on the advert. Anyway, what else have we got there? We've got uh, magnification. Uh, it's also a crucial factor. Anyway, the higher the magnification, you've actually got a narrower field of view. For instance, the higher these star cluster, magnification of 20, you can hardly fit them in. And, uh, but anyway, but the magnification of 8 or 12 or so, you can fit the whole cluster in quite easily. All right, it's a quite important factor to bear in mind. The lower the power, they're actually better in this case. Right, what else have we got then? There is a direct relationship actually between magnification and the brightness of the image uh, in, in accordance with the aperture. So okay, what we're going to do then, I've developed this little formula years ago, uh, you can, so you can compare one pair of binoculars to another. Uh, I'm not sure if I actually invented it, but perhaps I just accidentally come across it. Anyway, so uh, you've got 7 by 50s in this case. So what you do is you square the 50, so that's 50 times 50, 2,500. You also square the 7 magnification, so that's 49, and you divide the 2. So 2,500 divided by 49 equals 51. And that is the brightness index comparing to other binoculars. And uh, this gives some idea of how bright the image is going to be. Now let's have a quick look then. Now I've found everything, anything above 20 is fine for astronomy. Uh, below that you're making an inefficient use uh, of the light available. 7x35s, very popular pair, very compact, you can put it in a, a, a small bag. And uh, anyway, they've got a brightness index of 25. So it's 35 squared divided by 7 squared, 25. That's brighter, that's a higher than the, uh, the 20 that I was referring to. Anyway, if you just up the aperture a little bit to 7x50s, you get brightness index now 51. Almost twice as bright as an image as before. And uh, 10 by 50s, so all you're doing now is increasing the uh, magnification only by 3, and uh, the brightness index goes down by virtually half. All right, so there's a massive difference there. Uh, plus, you've got a narrower field of view, harder to pick out moving objects, I'll come back to. Uh, go up to that, uh, 20 by 60. Sounds impressive in both cases. Got wider aperture, so potentially you can see fainter objects, but if you've got a magnification of 20, look what it now comes out to. Uh, brightness index of 9, so you're actually going to get a fainter image uh, than before. Anyway, so uh, now you just increase the aperture a little bit, decrease the magnification and see what happens then. Uh, 12 by 70s, brightness ratio of th 34, that's what these are. All right, so you've got 70 millimeter objectives at uh, the front there, uh, only 12 magnification, so it's relatively low, and it also gives you a much steadier view, because the more you magnify an image, the more unsteady the view is going to be. Anyway, it's another disadvantage of high power, uh, but also the exit pupil diameter of these are 7 millimeters, exactly the, the diameter of your pupil when you're dark adapted. So it's absolutely perfect. Uh, that's why I chose these. Anyway, so up the magnification a bit from 12 to 15, look what happens. Brightness ratio drops by a third all right, in one instance. Anyway, so uh, 15 by 8 is to increase the aperture again, you get the brightness back up again at the 28. And uh, 25 by 125 is the largest pair I've ever owned, uh, brightness ratio 25. And uh, anyway, if I was a manufacturer, 20 by 125 is absolutely spot on because you get a relatively low magnification compared to the aperture, and you, get an, you can achieve fairly easily an, uh, an exit pupil diameter of 7 millimeters, and you get a brightness ratio of 39. So I'd advertise that if I was a manufacturer, I'd actually use that table for comparison. Anyway, another advantage uh, of low power is you can track moving objects relatively easily, like satellites for instance. Pass overhead, reflecting sunlight off the panel so you can see them fairly easily. But of course sometimes as the, as the satellite orbits the Earth, uh, the orientation is changing and the sunlight, because sun is about straight into your eyes. It's quite harmless, don't worry. But you'll see uh, a brightening effect of the satellite itself. Uh, it's great to observe this with binoculars. 
they faded here into the Earth's shadow as well. And you can track it for a little bit longer into the Earth's shadow uh, with binoculars before it actually fades completely. All right. Anyway, so it's quite an interesting phenomena to look out for. Anyway, if you're interested to know more about this sort of hobby, uh, there are some books out. In fact, there's three in the world. There's two of them uh, on the subject. One called Satellite Spotting and Operations Handbook. Uh, another one, Satellite Spotting for Youngsters, just different versions for different age groups. And then all by a chap called um, Peter Bassett. Uh, oh, that's me, sorry about that. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Anyway, so there's only three out of the world. They are easily obtainable if you're interested. There's ebook version too, as well as black and white and colour. Um, Outspacebooks.com. And, uh, but anyway, if you just want to know more about satellite spotting in general, there's a website out, satellitespotting.com, I guess it makes sense. And yes, mine as well, sorry. Okay, anyway, so I uh, hope, hope you have a good hobby, and I'll be a little bit wiser perhaps choosing the right pair for your, for your interests. Okay, thanks for watching.